my name is Lisa McPike Smith and I'm a ceramic artist and I've been doing that for about 30 plus years and uh, I recently started like six years eight years ago <laughs> started doing assemblage work so I do that as well. ask me if I make cats and I really don't <laughs> because a hep cat is beatnik or a lover of jazz so I kind of feel like there's nothing more you know original and unique and kind of American than jazz music <laughs> so hep cat it just I saw it in a book once you know 30 some odd years ago and I said hep cat that's what I want I want my art business to be called hep cat hep cat art <laughs> <laughs> my parents gave me a book when I was a little kid and it was uh, The Art of Walt Disney. And so I became a fan of Walt Disney. Just his whole world that he created with help just was appealing to me, you know, because he was creating something really cool and unique. And I, I think that one of the things when I was very young, that was one of the moments when I thought, I want to do this too. I, I want to be able to draw something by hand that looks real or, you know, or cartoonish even. <laughs> that clay, you know, I, I feel like that's part of the earth and it comes out of the earth and it's nothing until you make something out of it. And it's one of the oldest art forms. I mean, that's what early man was using to create bowls and plates and all kinds of tools and stuff. The assemblage that I make, that was more just kind of a result of not wanting to do my clay in the summertime when, you know, my kiln just makes everything so hot when it fires. So I started collecting little ceramic dolls, little porcelain dolls. They're from porcelain doll factories in a town in Germany, which had multiple doll factories from the early 1800s all the way to mid 1900s, about World War II time. And they would all make different versions of these little penny dolls that were sold worldwide in five and dime stores. And I started researching that a little bit and then started collecting them from sellers online. And most of the ones that I bought were broken, but I kind of felt like that was a good metaphor for recreating a, a world for them to live in. You know, it was like I'm taking something broken and discarded and I'm turning it into something new. So that's, I, I kind of just latched on to that, uh, the idea of giving them a second life. I kind of hope that people will see something different or new, or maybe it's something that's already been done, but it's done in a new way. Or, you know, I, I, I kind of like for people to assign me, their own meaning to my work. I want it to be a little bit mysterious, the assemblage especially. The clay work is a little bit, it speaks for itself, but the assemblage is a, a little out there. <laughs> We've had places in town that have had, you know, a vibrant art scene, but you know, they come and go. And I just hope that the art center can continue to bring new people in and and grow with this town because this town is growing. I feel like it's a little bit open to just about anybody. You know, if somebody wants to pursue getting their art out and into the public and have it be seen in a gallery environment, it's a good place to start. You have to follow your dream, I think. And you have to kind of be brave enough to be yourself and to let your voice kind of show in your work. And remain flexible <laughs> that's a good piece of advice because you know places close and 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 you get rejected a lot sometimes but if it's something you believe in and something that you want to do then you got to continue you just got to keep going keep it. even if it's just a side gig you know there, there are places for you to be able to do that so go <laughs> make art <laughs>